code. Great. Thank you. So welcome home USC Trojans to reunion weekend 2021. The insider's guide to LinkedIn getting noticed by employers and executive recruiters. My name is Lori Shreve Blake and I'm the Senior Director for Career Engagement at the USC Career Center. The Career Center is pleased to partner with the USC Alumni Association on this career focused reunion weekend event. Today we have two esteemed alumni returning home to USC to share their expertise and insiders knowledge about how to stand out and get noticed for that next career opportunity. Please join me in giving a warm Trojan welcome to Sharla Baker Jackson, CEO of the Candid Career and Career Collective Group LLC, and Jenny Meyer, Senior Direct Senior Recruiter at NBC Universal Media LLC. Welcome. Thank Thanks you for having us. Yeah, so, so we're so happy to have you. This is going to be a power thirty minutes, sort of like they, <laughs> yeah. rapid fire. So I. I've Esther speed dating, speed, speed dating, dating LinkedIn style. Yes, and I want to thank Esther Lanier, who's our senior career advisor, also for her help with this event. And this is our first time having kind of a thirty-minute rapid-fire uh, session. So we'll start with that first question. And the first question is, how uh, have recruiting practices evolved? in identifying talent in this current market. We're hearing so much about the great resignation and the war for talent and not enough applicants for the jobs that are available. Um, how is that evolving in terms of the recruiting practices? Has it evolved? And we'll start with uh, Jenny. Yeah, I think um, definitely it has. Um, I definitely in the past few years, but especially the past few months, it has been crazy. Um, one is I've definitely had to broaden my searches. So for example, instead of just looking at entertainment, um, if possible, I'll look at, you know, all different industries and really, um, open up, you know, the, the must haves versus negotiables. Um, and then you, I would also say having to be more proactive. So doing, um, more headhunting on LinkedIn, doing more just general networking and just being able to, try to keep contact with the, um, you know, strong candidates because you really have to, you know, keep, uh, keep them essentially. Yes, Sharla? I would agree with that. I, you know, I, we, I think as recruiters, we're always pipelining, right? We're always thinking ahead, but we've had to get extremely proactive these days because not only has the market shifted because of the pandemic we were in, but I've also noticed that, you know, good talent goes quickly, right? So um, I've always utilized LinkedIn Recruiter, which Jenny, I know you're probably <laughs> utilizing. Best that. friends with. It's my best friend. It's every recruiter's best friend. And um, the recruiter feature gives us that reach that Jenny was mentioning. You know, we're able to really dig deeper to hone in on core skills and, and, and specific areas that are needed for, the, for any given position. So I think just overall the utilization of social media as an amazing tool to connect with people, as Jenny said, being proactive and just getting ahead of the need. Mm -hmm. That's been, you know, the strategy uh, for me, especially over the last year or so. Yeah. Okay, getting ahead of that need. That's wonderful. Okay, our next question is, there, there's a war for talent, as I mentioned earlier. Executive recruiters and recruiters have a strategy to find the best talent. You're talking about the pipeline and, and anticipating what the organization's going to need. Walk us through the techniques you use to identify top talent. Do you want me to go first this time or sure. you want to go first? Sure. sure. Yeah, let's go. Jenny, take it away. Okay. Um, so I would, so basically how the um, recruiter feature works, I always almost think of it like shopping online for anything. Mm -hmm. Basically you can use, there's a bunch of different things you can um, sort through candidates. So it can be words, it can be location, companies, um, job titles, um, even as specific as, you know, how many years are you at your current company? What schools have you gone to? What years have you graduated? So the biggest thing I do um, is I just look and see, you, for me, the sweet spot when I do a search is about 
anywhere from 400 to 700 candidates I look at. Um, and after I kind of search people, so I play with all those different um, tools, usually focusing in on location, job title, um, and kind of seniority, and then go from there to either be more specific or more broad. Um, and then I just kind of look, sort through, and then, you know, reach out. Okay, Charla? Yeah, for me, I think my sweet spot is really um, definitely utilizing LinkedIn and, and <laughs> taking advantage of all the different filters and, and <laughs> things that are available with that specific tool. Um, but also, um, I really value the intake meeting, right? Getting to understand what are the core needs of the team? Who is this hiring manager? What is their history? You know, what are they really looking for? What's the company culture? I always, that, that term company culture, we hear a lot. <laughs> and uh, it used to, I used to be uncomfortable with it, but I, I thought through it and I was like, you know, it's my job to help a recruiter or help a hiring manager rather understand that company culture is really about, does this candidate fit to beat to our drum, beat to our pace? Do they understand the pace and the, the different layers of the company, right? And I think sometimes hiring managers think, company culture means, well, do they fit in with us? Would, would we want to have lunch together? And that's the wrong approach. So I really use that intake meeting to get to understand the hiring manager, but also to set the terms in terms of making it clear that this is the candidate market. And it's important for them to recognize that they have to be flexible um, and, and really um, take advantage of this opportunity to sell the candidate, right? Because the candidates have more choices and oftentimes the company has, right, when it comes to um, opportunity. And so my four core areas, I would say, are I um, first and foremost, you know, always look, and if I'm utilizing LinkedIn, LinkedIn recruiter, I'm always looking for the core skills first, right? The second skill, I think that I look, the second, uh, I think, core area that I look for is a candidate can often, how well do they demonstrate their experience, right? Their passion for, um, you know, what they're doing, the skills and tools, how are they conveying that in either an interview, but even just on paper, even through LinkedIn, right? Are they telling me exactly what I need to know to know and understand right away when I see their profile? Oh, this is someone who could do well here, right? Um, so I'm always looking for, um, those special key phrases and, and things that kind of alert me that, okay, they're right on track. Um, with that in mind, I think the third area is, is this an opportunity for growth for them? And I know, Jenny, you can relate to this. So often hiring managers, they know their needs and they're like, we want someone to hit the ground running. Well, what would make a position where a candidate can hit the ground running? What would make that interesting to the candidate? Right. It, I feel like that's it, very unlikely. There's always going to be a, you know, growth period and adjusting processes and stuff like that. Absolutely. It probably would not be, you know, the best fit for someone who um, is not, uh, you know, is right at that level. Right. And so I think that the important uh, thing to recognize is, is this an opportunity for growth for them? Will they be able to you know, achieve some, their next? As Lori mentioned early on in the intro, is this offering them their next, right? So I look for that um, when working with candidates. And then lastly, again, the culture, you know, do they beat to the drum, the, the corporate, you know, whatever it is that that company is, is um, known for, how their, what their rhythm is, does this candidate really um, align with that? Yes. Speaking of culture, just to add on to, it's not only culture of the company, but also the teams. Mm -hmm. Like and, uh, managers have very different ways of um, managing, essentially. So some te some managers I know, like very direct communicators, they're no BS, you know, they want someone who's quick and with it. Others kind of like a little more fluff. And you know, so um, knowing both as well and matching to, to both the company culture and culture of the team. Well, this, this is really helpful. And you all mentioned, you know, the company culture, cultures of the team, keywords, phrases that the candidates need to have. And so that's a good segue into our next question, which is how can candidates stand out to employers 
on various platforms. I know LinkedIn is the recruiter's best friend, but are there other ways to stand out in addition to LinkedIn? And, and on LinkedIn, what should they do? Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, and, I, and this is something I encourage my hiring managers to do as well. Jenny mentioned being proactive, right? Making sure that um, you're as proactive as possible. Engagement, not, um, I always think about the power of connection uh, before you need to connect, right? Or the power of being proactive before it's an immediate need. And I think that that is often missed. You know, we often wait until we know, okay, I can't deal with this job any longer. I have to move forward. Let me start looking and hope that, you know, in the next week or so, I start to get interviews and then get the perfect position. And we know that that's not how it works. So I always encourage, um, you know, people that I'm working with to, or that reach out to me for advice, be as proactive as possible, do informational interviews, have an informational mm -hmm. coffee. Engagement is the key mm -hmm. to really um, being able to matriculate and move from one situation to the next. If you're engaged, if you're being proactive, chances are the universe is going to align and the opportunities will, will be more prevalent. Yeah. And also utilize the Trojan network. I mean, we're so fortunate. We have an amazing network of people um, who are really, you know, willing to help. And so reach out to them, um, go to the events they have on, or hopefully they have events this year, but on campus, the career fairs, and you would be shocked how many students I will meet at a career fair. And I'll say, here's my email, reach out to me with your resume, remind me what you're interested in, and they never follow up. So it's like those kind of opportunities, reach out, follow up. You don't have to do every single opportunity, but at least do the ones that interest you most or the companies that interest you most um, and utilize those connections. And then specifically on LinkedIn, put as much information as possible. Again, think of it like you're searching for something. And especially let's say you're searching for, I don't know, a shirt and you don't know exactly what shirt you're searching for, but you know just enough. So like you... Think of it kind of that way, like put as much information as possible. So anyone they're looking for something specific or something broad, they can find you, but find you for the opportunities you're looking for. So if you're in marketing, highlight your marketing skills, you know, highlight all your skills, but specifically the marketing skills. Yeah. I, yeah. Go just ahead, to add to that quickly, if I may, I, I read an article on LinkedIn just to, to better understand how the algorithm works. And the majority of recruiters, when they do key searches, that headline on LinkedIn is the key, right? You want to make sure that you have all the key areas of interest and your experience um, in that headline, because the body is great. If, if you intrigue someone with the headline, they'll dig further and they'll look to really explore your background. But at a first glance, they, they're not going to look at everything. As Jenny, we, recruiters, we share this, it's like, five seconds or less, you know, we're like glancing to see what from this profile pops. If it's a good fit, then great, we'll explore further. Um, so just making sure that they can't, that people understand the importance of that summary at the top and how the LinkedIn, specifically LinkedIn, how that algorithm works. But I think any social media platform, I mean, I've yeah. looked for people on Facebook before, yeah. you know, so that header is so ex important, mm -hmm. regardless of what Instagram, whatever the platform is, um, all those keywords are going to pull first from that header. And with social media too, I mean, I don't usually um, look at candid social media, but occasionally I like, I will, and be mindful of the pictures you post. So I was once looking at a candidate and he was in a Playboy costume with play bunnies. And it was an entry level role, but I was iffy. Like I only looked because I was kind of iffy and that was like, eh, I'm gonna pass. He could have been totally fine, very professional, um, but be mindful of that. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. We're mm -hmm. actually having a, uh, my co our colleague, Jen Jennifer O'Connor is having a session next week on sanitizing your social media for our students. So yeah, really, really important point. Um, because hiring uh, managers always look. If the recruiter's yeah. not looking, I guarantee you the yeah, hiring it's manager. True. Is <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> true. Speaking of hiring managers, um, do the hiring managers ever refer, send you a candidate and say, check this one out? Or does that happen at all? Very often. Okay. Um, 
especially in my at NBC Universal, it's not only people in the inter- entertainment industry is not that big, you know, and so there are always referring people and then internal people as well. So um, even if you're not buddy buddy with the recruiter, buddy up to a hiring manager. If you know someone, um, or if you know someone who knows someone, you know it definitely makes a difference. Mm -hmm. But I also do think that it's important for candidates to recognize that they should ask for candidate privacy, right? Mm -hmm. Because I've also seen that backfire where, um, you know, because the entertainment industry is so small, uh, there's a propensity to uh, do back, what I call backdoor references. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you know they're connecting with people, and obviously that's illegal to connect with uh, someone you know to ask about a candidate. Uh, and hiring managers often don't realize that that that's highly illegal, <laughs> um, especially in the state of California, right? And so um, I always, you know, in the intake meeting, make sure that they're aware that if you want to refer someone, do so. But then I also tell candidates, you know. I, my job is also, you know, obviously I want to get you hired and find the right position for you, but I also want to protect your candidacy, your privacy throughout the candidate experience, because I've had it where, um, especially working in advertising where I've been for like the last four to five years, NBC Universal was actually uh, one of our clients that the agency, I was the head of talent, head of talent acquisition at um, on the West Coast. And um, I've had candidates say, hey, I know that the hiring manager is married to my boss <laughs> because it's, it, it's a really tight knit, you know, it might not be a spouse, but friends, someone who's worked with someone. And I've had candidates, this one particular candidate ask, you know, if I move forward, can you assure me that uh, my candidacy will be confidential until we get to the offer stage, then you can check my references and it's all good. But um, I think that that's a conversation that, Um, Candidates need to feel comfortable speaking with hiring managers and recruiters about that. I mean, recruiters certainly need to set the groundwork and make the candidate feel comfortable at hello, you know, once they start to engage. Yes. And if, okay, so we have our passive job seekers and then we have our active job seekers. For the active job seekers um, that want everybody to know they're looking, they can actually select that as a feature looking for work. Does that help you all at all? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Definitely, definitely, definitely select it. Um, sometimes, especially if I had, like I did a search that there's 2000, over 2000 candidates, I narrowed it down by, they call it open for opportunity. So hundred percent select it. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, it doesn't, if you're currently working, um, it doesn't show your current employer that you're looking FYI. So if there is um, autonomy, I mean, there is a uh, privacy there. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's great. Okay. Our next question is what advice would you give people who are starting to look for jobs? So we have those people. There's many people who, who, who um, gave their resignation. There's others who are still in place and may be considering um, moving because the market is good right now. And, you know, they, they want to take advantage of that. So what advice would you give? And we'll start with Charlotte this time. Sure. I mean, the best advice I could give is again, engage before there's a need right? Engage, connect, and be proactive. Um, That's first and foremost. Um, I also think that, you know, whenever you see a job description, you see must-haves and nice-to-have, right? Um, And sometimes there are those intangibles that you just can't put on a a job description. And so I think that it's important for candidates to know going in, know your worth, understand your boundaries, right? Know what works for you and what doesn't. I think everyone in the hiring process will appreciate that upfront as opposed to getting further along in the process when it's time to offer. And then we find out (laughs) all of these details that, you know, we could have very easily found out in the beginning of the process. Um, So definitely just know who you are and, and know your boundaries and don't be afraid to um, to move with forward with those in mind. Um, that doesn't mean have unrealistic expectations for yourself. You know, if you if you know that you're at a certain level, you know, you need to know and be realistic and self-aware in terms of where you truly land and the perks and the opportunities that come along at that level. Um, and you know, the well-versed candidates tend to know. You know, there are many candidates I've come into contact with lately who are like, look, I know that I need a flexible environment. I know that, you know, coming off of a pandemic, I work really well through Zoom. 
not that they don't want to come in a couple of days a week, but a lot of candidates know that they want to know, they want to know at hello that there's some flexibility. And so that would be my best um, advice. Have, write it down, write down your must haves, write down your nice to haves <laughs> and write down your deal breakers. Yeah, I totally agree. You want it to be a match. I mean, I look at it looking for jobs very much like dating, you know, where you're interviewing us as much as we, as we are interviewing you. Um, so yeah, so I think that's great advice. Um, a lot of it we already talked about definitely. I love the proactive. I a hundred percent agree. Do it before you need a job. Um, and then this is more for, I would say lower, like entry level, uh, people, if you're, or not even, I guess, entry, but if you're kind of still figuring out what you want to do, um, try different things, you know, and kind of see what did I, that's how I got here. I was like, what do I, what did I like from this job? What didn't I like? Okay. Well, I liked, um, the, the social piece, but it didn't challenge me enough. So maybe I'll pivot this way. Um, and I think that's just a good way to kind of, um, naturally figure out what, um, kind of what you want to do and what you like, but yeah. And through LinkedIn also, you can, you know, there are groups that you can join. Um, from those groups, you can see, you know, the different people in those groups. Mm -hmm. You can search. A lot of people don't realize that as a, you know, just a member of LinkedIn, there's the search capacity, right, that you can type in um, and see to a certain extent. It's not the same lens that Jenny and I are exposed to having LinkedIn Recruiter, but you can still see, you know, who works where, um, what are the titles, um, you know, to understand the title convention is, is you can see kind of the growth trajectory and path. There's a lot of research that can be done on LinkedIn that I don't think a lot of candidates are aware of. So they don't take advantage of those free mm -hmm. tools within the tool. And yeah, fill out your LinkedIn as much as possible. That's my last advice is, again, a, there's a lot of headhunting in this business and it's really through LinkedIn. So fill that as much as po possible and um, so we can kind of find you. Wonderful, thank you. And here's another question. So we, at the Career Center, we work with students and their careers as well as alumni. Uh, so this one's for our students. What would be the best approach students can use when connecting with recruiters in general, and then if they don't hear back from a recruiter. So, you know, we have students that are like, I wanna work for consulting, but I don't know any any recruit, how, recruiters. How, what advice would you give them? Yeah, um, well, again, use the, I would use the a USC network. So I would look on LinkedIn and see if there's anyone. Um, I actually, have, I talked to someone from USC yesterday, just the networking call. He reached out to me, said, I'm interested in your career path. Um, I'm, I go to USC. I would love to, you know, schedule a quick call. Um, and I did, you know, so I would look and see what alumni you have, see um, if there's any connection. Let's say it's not alumni, but let's say you see, I'm an Eagles fan. So let's say you see they're from Philly, you know, say go Eagles or like look to see if they have any personal or even professional information that you can connect with, you know, and kind of try to use something to connect with. Um, that would be kind of my, and reach out and they don't, if the recruiter doesn't answer, don't take it personally would be my biggest advice. It's not personal. Um, I wouldn't, you can try again. I wouldn't keep on bombarding them. Um, cause that's to be honest, not the most fun and it gets frustrating. Um, but I would just, you can try again and then just, you know, give it some time. And if they don't reach out, no, it's nothing personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with all of that. I think that that sums it up. You know, you want to make sure that you're you're reaching out, um, but recognizing that um, no one is obligated, and it's important to know that um, no one is intentionally. I don't. I haven't met any recruiters that just don't intentionally respond. You know, usually people respond, especially if you get a LinkedIn message. Um, you find that connection, collegiate connection, usually. Um, I get a lot of those people from USD and the Ohio State University, um, but also from a candidate perspective, I think um, as students, this is a good time to really do this. As you're doing your job search and you're looking for positions and identifying people in your network, um, look at who is in your network's network, right? And LinkedIn allows that. Right, I can go to your page, Lori, and see who you're connected with, who the mutual connections that we may have. 
Um, and again, I, I love LinkedIn so much. Um, you think I'd work, I work for them. I, I don't. Um, but it's just been such a great tool for me, especially being self-employed um, and having my own company. It's, it's been really great. Um, but I, I really want, I love any opportunity I get to educate people on all the different features because I, I truly feel that there are so many best kept secrets within that tool that people aren't aware of that are at their fingertips immediately as, as soon as they log in. And so, you know, getting creative, um, you have to be really creative. You know, we, we used to get um, applicants and we didn't have uh, the ability to utilize social media <laughs> or LinkedIn or some type of job platform to find talent. It was really just who applied. And, and looking through hundreds of resumes to get to those one or two gems that may be worth a conversation. Um, so I think it has to be twofold. It has to come from both ends. And um, I highly recommend that candidates as they pursue opportunities, especially at the student level, as they're looking ahead and thinking about graduation, that they get proactive. That's the key word, engagement, proactive, that keeps coming up throughout this conversation that they do that, but they also get creative and strategic in terms of how they do that. Mm -hmm. And with how they do it too, one thing I want to mention, this is all leveled, kind of mirror, once you have initial connection, kind of mirror what the rec how the recruiters re uh, uh, interact with you. What I mean by that is if I'm only emailing you and I'm not, you know, answering my phone calls, don't keep on calling me, email me. You know, you can call me, but that would be fine. But then like, then like I am usually in meetings all day. I don't, you know, have time to answer my phone. So it is not the best way to reach me, but I have some candidates who will only call me. And then I don't see the, like, so try to see how they're interacting with you and, or you can even ask the recruiter the, or whoever you're interacting with, what's the best way to reach you? I think that's a good question. And then um, follow up with them with that. And what challenges do you all face as recruiters that maybe the job seekers should know about that we can make it easier for you? Really, yeah, I think you know, we have a few minutes. One is great. You know, you want to allow, like, follow the recruiter's lead. If if they're responding to you through email, um, if you know, I mean, one thing that I'll say that I, I don't think is lost, and I think that this is more of, um, you know, post interview is I still hold on to cards because I don't get as many as I used to, mm -hmm. right? Because people just don't, it's just a new new age, right? And so we don't get as many handwritten cards, but I always, anytime I get a handwritten card, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is great. And so I have an appreciation for it, I think more so than I did, you know, five, six, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's still a great way to stay connected or at least to have a recruiter remember your name. Um, emails are fine too, you know, but I think short and sweet and, and keeping, I think the best, um, the best advice I could give it, it I, I get a lot of emails from people who ask for, um, they'll just say, Hey, we're, I'm a part of the USC network. Just wanted to connect. It's like, well, is that the only reason you wanted to connect? Mm -hmm. Right, I, I like intention. So be intentional. You know, if there's a way that I can help you, we're both part of the USC network, but I see that you're connected to Jenny at NBC Universal. Can you connect me to her? Do you know her directly or is it just a LinkedIn connection? I'd love to learn more about this position that they have. And usually I'll say, well, I don't know them well, or, you know, hey, I, I'm happy to at least put you on this person's radar and I'll pay it forward by letting them know that someone had reached out to me. So again, I think intention is key. And I know it's always uncomfortable when you're networking, people don't know how to approach um, recruiters and hiring managers, but I think we can all appreciate someone who comes to the table and says, hey, this is what I'm looking for. Can you help me in this area? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, intention, thank you notes, right? Thank you notes. Um, people don't, and I have not hired people because they didn't write a thank you note. Mm -hmm. So write a thank you note. Um, I think intention, and um, I had something else I don't remember, so I'll leave it at that. That's great, and and they can do both, right? They can send an email immediately. You know, oh, like, not, we we heard that the U.S. Postal Service is get, being a little slow now. They can. They can still let that that card get through the mail too, but so send two, 
Yeah. And I've oh, even here's got what... cards a month later, you know, mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, not sure if you made a decision for this position, but just wanted to let you know, I'm still looking for opportunities in this yeah. area. I mean, also asking people again, who their peers are in the industry that may, they may need to know, right? Whenever I do an informational interview, and this is even at my level with all the years of experience I have, if I do an informational interview, I always ask, Thank, I thank them for their time. And then I always say, is there anyone in your network that you think I would benefit from getting to know or that could potentially help me in a particular area based on my experience and now that you know what it is that I'm looking for? Mm-hmm. Nine times out of 10, they'll say, hey, you know, yes, my colleague here, definitely reach out. Let them know that I sent them your way. I know that they were looking for something. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. Any, any other fast, last words, Jenny? Um, no, I would just say, you know, again, to summarize, be proactive, be gracious of people's time and uh, go Trojans. <laughs> exactly. And our classic uh, Trojans, they're great with writing notes and saying yeah. thank you. So just continue to do that. And mm-hmm. um, let's take the career to the next level. I want to thank Jenny Meyer and Charlotte Baker Jackson, our esteemed USC alumni for sharing their pearls of wisdom, their insider's guide to how we can get recruited and um, take our careers to the next level. And we wish everyone a great reunion weekend 2021. And let's all say it together. Esther, you two come off camera or come on camera. <laughs> what are we gonna say? Fight on. Fight on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.